Hello, it's Tuesday, and we're talking about electrics again, uh, and we're talking about reversing loops. Uh, what exactly is a reversing loop? Well, they only pertain to railroads that have two rails, three rail. Railroads don't have to bother with, with this. But if you have a two rail railroad, whether it's uh, AC, DC, or DCC, if your trains go through some sort of a loop and come back on themselves, what we have called the outside rail, or the red rail we've designated it, suddenly becomes the inside rail, or the black rail. In other words, the entire railroad is shorted out. So you have to isolate that. And you do that by cutting a gap right there near the switch where the thing's going to come back in on itself. And you have to isolate both tracks. There's certain kinds of block controls and so on where you only have to isolate one track. But in the case of a reversing loop, you have to cut through both tracks. And the easiest way to isolate that is with a plastic rail joiner. And those are available in all the different scales, even in uh, Lionel and, and um, Gilbert and stuff by using plastic pins that they offer, but there's always a way to isolate that. And we'll actually do a video on different techniques for isolating that, because there are other ways of going about it. But you have to have isolation there, and then you also have to have isolation at the other side of the switch where you enter the loop. Because what we need to be able to do is control the polarity inside the loop. What we can do is put that on its own reversing switch. The switch that we're going to use for that, um, a reversing switch, is simply a double pole, double throw switch. Because we're isolating both rails, we need to have two different poles, two different switches in there. And then it has to throw to two different positions from a, a center control. So we, on the back of the switch, we have six different pins. Two of them go into the switch itself, two go to one position, and two go to the output of the switch to the other position. Now what we're going to do is connect our track voltage to two of the pins at one end of this thing, and then run wires across the middle to the other side so that the other side is reversed from this side, so that when you throw the switch, the, the voltage here at the center two pins is going to switch from one side to the other. Then we take those center two pins and we connect those to the track that we're trying to control. So it's a very simple little thing to make. You just take a double pull, double throw switch and you solder two wires in a cross across the back of it, connect um, one end, it doesn't matter which one, to your track voltage, your bus, whatever, and then the center two pins to the reversing loop that you're trying to control. Now, the other issue that we've got is while that will allow, will allow us to align the polarity at the opposite end of the loop, because it's a DC railroad, if this were an AC railroad or a DCC railroad, that's about all we would need. But on a DC railroad, if we throw that switch, it's going to reverse the train. It's going to start backing up. So how do we deal, deal with that? Well, we have to ice, also isolate the area coming outside the loop. And what most people will do is use the whole rest of their railroad as the outside of the loop. But that just sort of depends on your track plan and on your preference on how you want to go about this. But in that typical situation, now you have two of these reversing switches to control your reversing loop, one that controls the polarity inside the loop, and one that controls the polarity of the entire rest of the railroad. So once your train enters the loop, and an important feature here too, that loop has to be able to hold the entire train. Otherwise, when you switch the polarity, metal wheels crossing that gap are going to short the railroad out. So your loop needs to be big enough to hold an entire train, whatever you're going to be operating. So it might be a really large loop, depending on what you're running. If you're running 100 car trains, it's going to be a really big loop. Once the entire train is in the loop, all we need to do is reverse the polarity of the entire rest of the railroad. That will mean that instead of the polarity matching this side of the loop, the polarity will match 
this side of the loop and the train will just continue on in a continuous motion right through the loop and right back out of it. The problem being that if you're doing that to the entire railroad, any other train running anywhere else on the railroad is going to suddenly change direction when you throw that switch. So that's just something you have to work through with your own preference and your own track plan if you want to maybe further isolate a section outside the loop where you can reverse the polarity only there or if you're okay with reversing the entire railroad. There also comes a, a debate, do you reverse the direction of your trains with this switch uh, or do you reverse the direction with your master reversing switch on your controller? And most people will say reverse the direction with the master switch on your power supply. But when you're running a train through the loop, you have to make sure that the switch is aligned for the intake side, whichever side the train is entering from. Once the train is inside the loop, throw the switch to reverse the direction of the whole rest of the area outside of the loop and the train will just continue on right on around. The question comes up, is there some way to just automate this? And yes, there is. And that's going to be a future video. And then again, to drive home this point, if you're working with AC or DCC, it's a little bit simpler because you can, instead of throwing the switch that controls the whole rest of the railroad, you can throw the switch that's inside the loop because changing the polarity isn't going to change the direction of the train. So once the entire train is inside the loop, all you need to do is throw the switch that controls the loop itself. That will align the polarity to the out, the outtake side, the outbound side into the switch, aligning the polarity so that there isn't a short and the train will just continue on in the same direction that it was going because it doesn't really care what the polarity on the track is, the direction is being set. In the case of DCC, by the DCC controller, in the case of AC, by the field position of the motor magnets inside the locomotive. So you can change the, the uh, polarity of the track on those two systems all you want. It won't affect the direction of the train. But on a DC train, of course, that's how you change the direction of the train. So then we have this other system. But in all three cases, we have to have an isolated reversing loop. Hope that makes sense. Um, if, if, if so, we're ready to move on to uh, our next subject, which is also on reversing loops. But uh, if you're not a member of the channel, uh, you can join by clicking on the join button and that sends five dollars a month our direction and it really helps so if you want to be a member you can click the join button but if you're not a subscriber please click the subscribe button and then you'll be notified when these videos go up if you set your notification bell and it doesn't cost a thing you just click on the upcoming subscribe button are we ready for that Zoink right there with the button well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet i hope you didn't find it boring and uh, Karen and I will see you on Sunday with some Sunday foolishness. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.